Let's get right to the Middle East where protests are breaking out in a handful of countries just today as we speak. Yeah, this is unfolding as we speak, Andy. Still, the, the public protests that we saw emerge in Tunisia and Egypt unfolding in countries around the Middle East. What you see, which is of interest, I think, is that uh, this wave of protests is hitting patches of instability and places in, in the Middle East where there's been simmering conflict for some time. And that's why I think you see in Bahrain, for example, a lot of tension now, a lot of violence, uh, where you've had the Sunni minority monarchy ruling over the 70% Shia majority, where there has been tension between the two sides all along. And so this wave of protests, which, which has come out of North Africa, is now hitting the Persian Gulf and hitting Bahrain in a way uh, that is turning somewhat violent and really feeding on some of the divisions in that society. You're seeing that as well in Yemen, where there is uh, instability in the government. The government's weak. There are a lot of divisions from the old civil war days in Yemen, north-south, uh, divisions between the Sunni uh, government and the Houthi rebellion in the north and problems with uh, Sunni extremists. And so in these societies that already have lots of problems and uh, simmering divisions in them, uh, that's where you see these protests starting to gain additional steam and where you're seeing some of the violence. But I think most Americans would consider, Bar would consider Bahrain a stable monarchy, and yet we see gunshots in the square there and people being killed and seriously injured. This is not even p whips and, and clubs. This is gunshots and gunfire and bullet wounds. So are, were you surprised at the level of violence and how quickly it escalated there? Yes and no. I, I think uh, yes in the sense that our, our impression of Bahrain, and I've been to Manama a couple of times, uh, is of a sleepy sort of uh, island state that is known better for banking uh, in Manama than anything else and has the causeway to Saudi Arabia. Um, but underlying that, there have always been tensions with the Shia majority. And you know, some of the human rights concerns that the U.S. has expressed before has, has been with the ability of the Bahraini monarchy to allow for political expression for that minority. And so uh, I think the type of violence that we're seeing is surprising. It doesn't match with our impression of Bahrain. Uh, but at the same time, it, uh, it does match with some of the divisions in that society. And I think that's why you're seeing the government crack down, even today, very hard, uh, because they do not want this to get out of hand, and they see this as part of a broader uh, division in their society, uh, and they don't want chaos to ensue. I, I have one more question, which I think uh, the, uh, the American people realize that the Fifth Fleet is, is headquartered in Bahrain. Yeah. There are a lot of Americans there because of that. How does that affect things for us and for them? It's a, it's a great question, and I think it makes Bahrain uh, slightly different than, than Egypt. In some ways, Egypt was difficult because we had a, an ally in Mubarak for right. 30 years, uh, but we also wanted to, uh, to help the protesters and, and give voice to their aspirations. In some ways, though, it's easier than the Bahraini case because in the case of Egypt, we have been pushing for political freedom, openness, uh, open and transparent elections for some time. Mm -hmm. We had been pushing uh, both in the prior administration and this administration for Mubarak not to hand over power to his son. And so right. in some ways, we had already the antecedents of the process uh, in mind. With Bahrain, no one had, has been talking about uh, the Khalifa monarchy stepping down. There's been no sense or even pressure from the U.S. government or policy to have them hand over power to the parliament or anybody else. There's been pressure to open the society, to right, have right, parliament right. more elections, but certainly not this. And so Bahrain presents a different uh, equation here because it's not clear where we want it to end up. Yeah. Uh, plus, as you said, that's where the Fifth Fleet is. Uh, in addition, it's a Gulf monarchy, uh, and it is a bulwark against Iran. And as goes Bahrain, uh, I think people in Washington would be worried, and pe people elsewhere uh, would say, there goes as well the Saudi monarchy, the monarchies in the UAE and other places where we have even deeper and more important inter interests. Because the oil states could domino the after oil, Bahrain. You have oil, oil implicated, uh, trade, uh, the issues of uh, the conflict with Iran, potentially, uh, f the fight against al-Qaeda and extremists. Uh, all of these things are swirling about as we look at what's happening in Bahrain. I think it's a, an important linchpin to where we go, and it's why I think you're going to see the administration uh, advocating for nonviolent means of dealing with these protests, but you're not going to see them be as aggressive as they were in the Egyptian context, talking about transition now or transitioning to a particular end state, because I'm not sure what we think that right end state should be in a place like yeah. Bahrain.